How does science progress? We tend to assume that science progresses cumulatively, with the frontier of science hoisted up on the shoulders of giants as it reaches ever upwards towards ultimate truth. However, in his seminal work, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, published in 1962, the American physicist and philosopher Thomas Kuhn proposed that this view of science was incorrect. According to Kuhn, science does not progress cumulatively, rather scientific establishments exist as distinct and incommensurate ideological systems, which rise and fall just like dynastic empires, as the sands of empirical evidence shift over time. Kuhn proposed that science is far from the paragon of rationality that one might assume, Though it may use the scientific method which is of rational intent, science largely operates by establishing certain axiomatic ideas, which Kuhn referred to as paradigms. These paradigms are ideas or theories which are foundational to each scientific system, and together with their devoted advocates, form what Kuhn called a disciplinary matrix. Over time, these paradigms become articles of scientific dogma, with which all subsequent ideas must cohere or else face rejection. Thus it is argued that science operates via a non-rational method of seeking to justify new ideas with respect to old paradigms, rather than evaluating new discoveries exclusively on their rational or empirical merit. This fundamental discord between non-rational justification versus rational discovery, Kuhn referred to as the essential tension of science, and it is this tension which has so often resulted in scientific institutions admonishing dissidents, even within their own ranks. For example, in 1934, the physicist Enrico Fermi was effectively ostracized from the field of theoretical physics, having been repeatedly declined publication for his now widely accepted theory of neutron decay. In the 1980s and 90s, the Canadian archaeologist Jacques Cinq-Mars was relentlessly castigated by his peers for bringing to light the now accepted evidence that humans had settled in North America 11,000 years earlier than previously believed. And in the 19th century, the Hungarian doctor Ignaz Semmelweis was driven to a nervous breakdown and committed to an asylum by his peers for advocating that doctors ought to wash their hands so as to reduce the rate of infection-related mortality in hospitals. These and other countless examples occur because science, just like every other human enterprise, is fraught with human frailty, such as ego and avarice which, as the philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer once wrote, is why all truth must pass through three stages. First, it is ridiculed, second, it is violently opposed, and third, it is accepted as being self-evident. According to Thomas Kuhn, the disciplinary matrix of the prevailing scientific norm will inevitably try to resist or suppress any evidential anomalies that are incompatible with its paradigms until, that is, that the anomalies are so conspicuous or great in number as to trigger what Kuhn called a crisis, for which the only resolution is a scientific revolution and a paradigm shift. As the physicist Max Planck once remarked, science advances one funeral at a time, and indeed the advent of scientific revolution often involves the death of old paradigms and their supervening ideas a phenomenon referred to today as Kuhn loss. Therefore, while science undoubtedly has its rational merits, one must remain cognizant of the fact that just as with all human endeavour, science is vulnerable to the non-rational machinations of ego, partisanship and ideological thinking. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, and until next time, Thanks for watching.